Hello Booktube. Hello Booktube, my name is Kate and this is my channel Chapter Kate. Today I am going to be bringing to you my Christmas haul. I'm sick. I'm actually extremely grateful for each of these books even if my face and my voice do not portray that excitement as well as I would like it to. <sighs> yes. Also, I haven't quite figured out how to work this ring light to where it doesn't glare on my glasses because the camera goes like on the same stand so I can't like separate it from the whatever. I will just to start off I will say that for Christmas I got a, a nice ring light. I got a one of those fuzzy microphone things and I got a program for my computer to edit videos so that's awesome. It's so much easier than that crappy free program I've been using. So thanks husband. Okay, so I have five different stacks of books for this video. Um, the first is a stack of books that I got on sale at Barnes & Noble prior to Christmas for myself and for Stephen. It's for us to kind of share. Um, I have a Barnes & Noble membership card, so things are a little bit cheaper, which is nice, and I always keep an eye out for when there's a sale, um, especially if it's something that I've been wanting for a while and um, I haven't bought because of the price. I feel like I'm dying. I think I left one out. Oh, there's the other one. Come here, little bugger. Then I have books that I got from booktube friends. So that's y'all. And then I got books that I got from my husband, Steven. And then books that I either got from family or I got from money that family gave me specifically for books. And then I have books because the library at work is sizing down for this big moving process that's happening at work. So I snatched them. So let's get started. Okay, so the books that I got on various sales at Barnes & Noble are The Nutcracker by Alexandra... Alexander? Alexander? Alexandre? You know, I've never really heard this guy's name pronounced now that I think of it. It's either Alexandre Dumas or Alexander Dumas. Alexander. Dun, dun, dun. Alexander. Alexander. But The Nutcracker is a classic Christmas tale about nutcrackers that come to life. I didn't make it through the whole thing. It was very entertaining what I did read of it. Um, but then I just never got to finish it. Um, the humor is extremely surprising that there's like humor in this book. For some reason, I don't know why that surprised me. But that did. All I remember about the story is that I was absolutely terrified of the movie as a child because there were giant rats. And I don't, I don't know why I was scared of that. I'm not scared of rats now, but I was scared of rats at the time. I feel like I should take these off so you could... No. Then we have The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. <clears throat> I really wanted to read this book after watching the Netflix miniseries. I've heard a lot of different stories about what the different children represent, and I realized that I really wanted to read The Haunting of Hill House after discovering that Shirley Jackson also wrote the short story The Lottery, um, and that was very interesting to me. I, I enjoyed that sort of moral dilemma in that story, and so I am looking forward to reading this. I got the Netflix cover. Usually I would never get that cover, but I liked it a lot more, so shame me if you will. Then we have, oh gosh, the next book I purchased at the, for sale. Oh, they were all for sale. The next book I purchased was Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha and Yun. Um, I don't really know anything about this book. I just know everybody's been talking about it. Um, it seems like there are some sapphic elements to it, which I'm excited about. Ooh. Ooh. So it seems like in this kingdom, one girl is chosen to serve the king, I guess, annually um, from like the lower class. It doesn't say straight up that it's in a sexual way, but it kind of makes me feel like that's what's going on here. So, but it says that the girl this year is made of, not made of paper, but of fire. So maybe she's got some fight in her. Maybe she's going to burn him, burn his ass. Next. The next was the Night Angel Trilogy by Brent Weeks. There was a 10th anniversary edition and I just saw this large black brick and I just wanted it because it looked cool. But then my husband was like, 
you're doing it again. You're buying stuff because it looks cool and fits your aesthetic. And I said, you're right, sir. But then I looked it up so I could learn more about it. And it seems like a really cool fantasy sort of trilogy. It's about an assassin who believes his work to be an art form. And honestly, I'm such a hoe for assassin stories. I'm gonna get right up into this. The next is The Books of Earth Sea. It's the complete illustrated edition by Ursula K. Le Guin. And there are pretty pictures in it. Also, I'm semi-drugged out right now on cold medicine, so sorry. I need a tissue! Ugh. Why do they hit me? This is huge, and it's so pretty. And honestly, I got it because my husband said it was good and he has really high standards for fantasy. And I thought it would be something cool that me and him could read together. Um, also, it's blurred by Neil Gaiman and Margaret Atwood, which excites me. <coughs> Death <coughs> is upon me. I'm trying not to go into a bunch of detail about these books, though, because there's so many books on this, and so I have to get through them all. Then, Barnes & Noble had a sale on their fancy hardbacks. I have a ton of, like, fancy Barnes & Noble editions of things that I just thought were pretty and I wanted them. And they're all classics that I already wanted to own. So, they had, like, a four for 24 or something like that sale. And usually they're each, like, 24. So, it was nice. So, what I got was Winnie the Pooh. It's illustrated. I loved Winnie the Pooh growing up and still do. I, I love it. I love the way it has different characters that sort of remind you of different emotions and helps kids to process different sort of personalities and things like that. And I think that's pretty darn cool. And then we have a Christmas treasury, which I didn't want, but I really just wanted a Christmas carol in its own book. And I couldn't find it, so I got this because it was in there and they were trying to sell this, which is probably why they didn't have any of those in stock because jerks. But it's, it's nice. Um... The pages are shiny. All of these have shiny pages, actually. Um, and it's got a nice painting in there. Just like the Winnie the Pooh one, which I didn't show you. It has a nice 100 Acre Wood map. But it's it's great. It's got a lot of Christmas stories in it. And then I got Robin Hood, which I've had my eye on forever. Again, they're all very shiny. It has a beautiful artwork in there. And it's the Robin Hood Adventures. It's got some colored illustrations in there. They all have ribbon bookmarks. And then I got The Wizard of Oz, which is the first, it's the first five novels. They used to have, like, I, th I think they used to have novels six through ten as well. And I haven't seen it in a very long time. Because what I was doing is I was waiting and then I was going to get both of them at the same time. And I haven't seen that other one since then. So... This is what I have. But this also means that I can get rid of my other single copy of The Wizard of Oz, which I think is just the first one. And I can give that to someone. So now I'm going to go through my booktube friends' gifts. I'll try to do it in order of when I got them. Fridge. I left one of them in there. And the first book that I got from booktube friends is We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. I got this book from Sierra from Reading Arsenal. She's an awesome person, an awesome human being, and we have really great talks about mental health, mental illness, and stigma a lot. It's one of my fascinating topics I like to bring out in casual conversation. But she's pretty, she's just, she's just an awesome person. And she just recently shaved her head and looks like a badass, so go check her out. I'll link her, and I'm, this is a book about a dude who gets repeatedly, what is the word, abducted. He gets repeatedly abducted by aliens, and they basically give him the decision to either save the planet or let them all perish, and he has pretty serious depression, and, you know, if you want to know kind of what his view on people in general is, you can read the first line, which is, life is bullshit. That gives you some insight into how he feels about the world, which doesn't really seem very promising when it comes to, like, oh, saving the world and such. Thank you much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sierra, for this book. I've already semi-started, like, the first, I read the first chapter because I'm trying to finish something else real quick. Um, but I'm so excited to get into this book. Thank you. Ah! The next book is The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. Honestly, the synopsis of this, look at that holographic. I love hollow! I am holosexual. Uh, so, this book gave me serious, like, Sanderson sisters vibes because it's about these three sisters who were executed 
for I guess witchcraft and there's some curse and then they're coming back I think and it's it's gonna be interesting I think they take over some people's bodies so I don't know how it's gonna go but it sounds awesome I didn't know who this came from for a long time because it didn't have a note but apparently it was supposed to have a note and like it got lost or something but I got this from Heth at the bookworm Heth I can't say Heth it's really hard to talk with my nose so stuffed up but thank you so much I'm so excited and Heather is one of like my favorite booktubers as well. Like all these people that sent me things were already like faves and I just, I love them so much. Heather is awesome. We've talked about mental health a couple of times. Um, she's just so encouraging and so strong and I love her voice. <laughs> I just love her accent. She's great. She has a great channel. You should check her out. Thank you, Heb. The next book was also a secret. I didn't know who sent it for a long time because, like, I guess the note didn't send or something. Oh, this is Speak the Graphic Novel, and this is by Laurie Halls Anderson and Emily Carroll. I hadn't ever read the original story of this or seen the movie. Apparently there's a movie. I didn't know. Um, so I, I just heard really good things about it, and the artwork looked really beautiful. I put it on my wish list. But Alana sent this to me, and... <coughs> Death is upon me, death is upon me, oh, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. Alana sent me this from the Awkward Book Nerd, and I already read it, and it was so good. It was so good. Um, I had never heard of the story before, so I didn't understand, you know, I didn't know about the hype, I didn't know how good this was. It was so, so amazing. It is, um... There are heavy trigger warnings for rape in this book, um, sexual harassment, bullying, self-harm. Also, there's also self-harm. And since this is a graphic novel, there are visuals of certain things that may be extremely triggering to some people. Um, I did find the self-harm aspect a little bit triggering in this book, but it was so well written and so respectfully done. And there's just... Oh, the tree symbolism, and oh, it was so good. But the back right here says, I said no, and as you can guess, this is from a rape. Um, the main character was raped, and you kind of start learning more and more about the situation, why people are treating her terribly, and you kind of go through her process of um, processing what happened to her. So I think it's done very respectfully, and I think that's hard to do for some authors, and I think it was done very well. Thank you so much, Alana. The next two books are from the same person, um, and the, they are Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo and Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. So these were both from Samantha Leanne at Leanne's Lit. She lives in South Carolina with me, and I haven't met very many booktubers. I just kicked my thing. I haven't met many booktubers who do live in South Carolina, so it was nice to have a neighbor here. And she bought me this one, and I, I've i read two of the Grisha Trilogy. I've read two of the Grisha Trilogy, um, but everyone tells me that this one's better. These, this duology is better, so I'm really excited to get into it. Everybody seems very emotional about this duology, so we'll see if I am also emotional. And then she gave me a horror store because she decided that she wanted to be on brand. At least that's what her note said. And if you don't know Samantha Leanne, which I don't know why you wouldn't, um, from Leanne's Lit, look her up. I'll put her in the description. She is like the horror queen, so thank you so much. My phone's asleep. Next, I have the fifth season um i guess it's just it's she um next i have leah from where in the world is leah jane gave me the box set of the fifth season um i guess it's called the fifth season trilogy i can't i don't really know if that's the, the trilogy name or not now that i think about it i'm not sure i took the box the box is over there because we were trying to organize and it was hard um but these are by nk jemison who has won the hugo award i think three years in a row yeah She's had the Hugo Award for three years in a row, which is absolutely amazing. What's it about? I don't even know. I just know there's magic. There's some, like, Earth kind of catastrophe that happens, and then there's, like, a war, and there's, like, someone kills, assassinates somebody, and then, like, this whole turmoil, tumultuous. I feel terrible, sorry. Tumultuous, tumultuous, tumultuous thing. And I'm so, I'm so freaking excited. I've been wanting to read this for a while. Um... So I'm not sure if I'm going to start it this month or start it next month, but I have three of them because it's a box set. So I'll probably read one this month and try to read one next month and try to read it like that. It's It does seem like a, a thicker kind of high fantasy. So um, I kind of want to read them all at the same time, but I don't know if I will. 
we'll see. But it's cool. I'm, I'm excited. I'm so excited. And Leah also gave me this, I think, from Etsy. And it's like, she asked me uh, my, um, what is the word? I'm so tired. It's the Harry Potter thing with the white, the stag, and the... What is it called? My Harry Pat Patronus. Yay! Patronus. She asked me what a Patronus is, and I did the on the on Pottermore. It said my Patronus was a Thestral, and so she got me this on Etsy. It's a, it's like a painting of a Thestral on a page um, from Harry Potter. It's like the the page in Harry Potter where they were gonna fly the Thestrals, and they were all kind of freaked out about that. So it was it's kind of cool that they painted it on that page, but it was just really thoughtful. So thank you so much, Leah. I appreciate it so much, and it's gonna go up right there with my Harry Potter book. I only have one. <laughs> it's a paperback of the first one. I need to get the whole set so I can have that with my set and everything but I don't have the whole set one day and then Sarah where is my other book oh no where did it go Angelini and then Sarah from Novel Serendipity gave me Trial by Fire which is her absolute favorite book and we're going to be doing a read-along for this book so you should check it out oh my gosh I'm so excited about it and she had this little bookmark it's a magnetic Ravenclaw bookmark like right there on it and so that was so sweet um and she also gave me the first two books um <clears throat> of the I Hate Fairyland series. I read the first one already and it was so good. It's by Scotty Young who also writes Deadpool graphic novels and it's just so good. I'm so excited to read the second one. Um, I love the personality. It's about this little girl that got dropped into Fairyland and there's like supposed to be like a cute little quest and you finish it and then you get to go home but she's like 30 something and still hasn't finished it but also hasn't aged and she just turns like the other way. She just she's not like cute and happy. She looks cute and happy but she's actually like a murderous terror and so that's great. And then Sarah also <laughs> gave me this <sighs> Harry Potter blanket. I just knocked over something. It's got Ravenclaw fabric on one side and then it's got Marauder's Map fabric on the other side and it's just, it's so cozy. It's so, I've been like walking around the apartment like this because I've been not feeling well and it just, it's cozy and makes me happy. Thank you, Sarah. Now we're going to move into the family portion of my Christmas haul, um, but I'm going to start with my friend Chris, who might as well be family. Um, we've known each other, like, about as long as I've known my husband. We were in, like, indoor percussion, drumline together. He got me two books. He got me The Mortification of Favea Munson, and it is by Mary Wynne Hyder. Chris and I met Mary Wynne Hyder at Read Up Greenville. If you've watched that vlog, he's the one in that vlog, and... I was saying that I really needed to get this book because she was hilarious and like she made so many anatomy puns and it made me really really want this book. So he got it for me so we can buddy read it. I'm so 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 excited. And he also got me El Defo. Chris and I both took ASL in college. We didn't take it together because we went to two different colleges. Um, but we both love ASL and learning about deaf culture. So he gave me um, El Defo. There's not like a lot of ASL in this book but there is a lot about... Um, the experiences of this author, C.C. C. Bell, is kind of um, autobiographical, and it's a middle grade graphic novel, and it's it's just the cutest. I read this already, and it was just so heartwarming. This was actually my first read of 2019, and it was just, I just loved it. I loved it so much. Thank you so much, Chris. Okay, I don't know where to start with the books that my husband got me. He got me like a ton. The first is Contagion. Um, this book, <coughs> I saw it was a science fiction book and I actually got it confused with Nixia um, by an author I met at Read Up Greenville. Um, so I don't know what this is about because it was not even, it wasn't the book I thought it was. But I'm still really excited to read it. But it is science fiction. It's pretty much like they find this, like, I guess it's like a planet. <coughs> they got like a, they got like a, a cry for help from this random planet and then they get there and it's just everyone's dead and there's just garbage everywhere and everything's a disaster and then the it goes from there so contagion and it's by aaron bowman skeleton crew by stephen king this is a book of short stories by stephen king i really like short stories and i'm trying to get into stephen king so i'm hoping that this will help me kind of get into him then we have death note he gave me volumes one through four the black editions the only manga i've ever read is dead man wonderland it was extremely disturbing but i i do want to read more of it i've only read like the first five or six but i 
did kind of get an interest in Death Note because I heard a lot of people talk about like the premise of it and basically this guy finds this book and if he writes a name down in it then it can you know it kills whoever he writes down so you know at first it's like oh he wants to kill evil people but it's really easy for that power to kind of go to your head so I'm guessing the series kind of just goes from there from that premise then my husband got me the next three Sandman graphic novels I have the first two so he got me three four and five the Sandman universe is my Neil Gaiman it's a very extensive very complicated universe with a lot of references um there are these sort of personifications of different ideas the primary character is um sleep his name is dream but they also go by other names so um yeah like Sandman. Then he also gave me the graphic novel version of American Gods, which I am so excited about. So I am still finishing American Gods, the book book, like the novel book, non-graphic novel. Um, I started it in Canada and I got like halfway through, so I got to finish that. But um, yeah. Then we have Radiance by Catherine M. Valente. Valente. I heard really cool things about this book. Somebody was reviewing it. I cannot remember for the life of me what booktuber it was that was reviewing this book on their channel. If it was you, let me know. But it sounded right, like right up my alley. It's like a, it is a space opera. Again, it's a deck pump. Oh, I know who it was. It was, um, my reading is odd. Yes. Yes. Um, it's a decopunk pulp science fiction all history space opera mystery set in a Hollywood and solar system very different from our own so it sounds really cool it sounds really really cool and I'm, I'm, pr I'm pretty dang excited about it and then we have rabbit and robot this was a cover by yes okay I didn't buy it my husband bought it for me but I told him I wanted it because it was gorgeous and I was like that's really cool looking and it looks science fiction -y. I need it. It's really interesting, like the blurb on the back makes it feel like a normal high school situation. Um, but then it's like this past summer there were 27 simultaneous wars and we're up in heaven watching the world burn. I think they're on a spaceship. I think, I think they're on a spaceship. And then my husband bought me two nonfiction books about writing. One of them was Wonder Book, which is really, really cool. It goes through all, it's a, it seems like it's going to be a really great um, resource. It kind of goes through various writing processes, um, various genres, it, like mapped out science fiction genre, like where it started. And it's it's just, it's really cool. Um, so I will talk more about that once I've gotten more into it. He also got me another book that I already had. So we took it back and he got me two other books instead. He got me something that we've laughed at a long time. We keep seeing this book called The Dinosaur Princess. <laughs> And I needed it really bad. But it's like not the first in the series. The first is the Dinosaur Lords. So I'm going to read this bad boy. I told him I really wanted to read more bizarre stuff this year. And then he also got me Hot Lead Cold Iron. It's got like a fey detective. It's like an urban fantasy. <laughs> a potent mix of gangsters and magic. Gripping. Fantastical. <laughs> I am psyched. This video is getting so long. But next we have the books that I got with Christmas money. So um, I had a couple of family members that gave us money specifically for books. Steven's parents had actually ordered us some books and um, something happened to their Amazon order and they got damaged. So they gave us money instead. So a lot of these were bought um, on sale at Barnes & Noble with that money. So uh, like I said, I've been going for weird stuff. So I got... This is called Invasion by Luke Reinhardt. It's about some little alien that comes to the Earth and they kind of keep him around because he's cute and he's fun. And then he starts like hacking into the government databases. 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 Then we have Alice Isn't Dead by Joseph Fink, who's the guy that wrote. Um, he writes the Welcome to Night Vale. Um, I actually have Welcome to Night Vale, the book, but he, the, he writes the podcast. So it's about a woman named Keisha and her wife Alice. Um, her wife Alice is believed to be dead but I guess something happens and then she finds out that she might not be dead like she starts seeing her at all these like tragedies across the country like I guess maybe on like the news like in the feed and stuff um start seeing her like pop up on these like I guess these news reports about these different traumatic events um so she kind of goes on a trek across the country trying to find Alice then we have The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. Jesse from Books and Bowties was talking about this and seemed hella excited for it. I just like science fiction and I was excited to get into more science fiction this year. So I bought it because I had book money. There's an exotic reptilian pilot. So it definitely fits my weird... <coughs> 
requirement. But of course it's another space opera because I'm just, I'm getting into all these space operas. I need more space operas in my life. Who doesn't need space operas in their life? Speaking of that, we also have Space Unicorn Blues. This is about a man, I guess he's like half unicorn or something. And they enlist a, she? Yes, she enlists a half unicorn who has unicorn horn powers um, that allow him to travel faster than light. But he's just been released from prison for murdering his wife. <laughs> I have no idea what to expect with this. But when I was looking for something weird, this was the weirdest thing that I could find. My tea is cold. Then we have the tiger's daughter. There's some empire and like the walls have been crumbling. And so demons are starting to invade and... Obviously, that causes a lot of issues, but there are these two warriors, and those two warriors are gonna fight the demons, because they're not afraid. And this is by K. Arsenal Rivera. The two main characters are named Oshizuka and Barsalaya Shafali. Next, we have On a Sunbeam. It is a space thing as well. It's a space opera. <laughs> it's also a space opera, but it's a graphic novel. And if I was tried to tell you that I didn't get this for the aesthetic, I would be such a liar. And then we have The Assassination of Brengwain Spurge by M.T. Anderson and Eugene Yelchin. No idea what it's about. It just looks cool. And it was super cheap at Barnes & Noble because it was on sale. And then I got The Oregon Trail. It's four choose-your-own-adventure books. And after playing Bandersnatch on Netflix, I needed this in my life. And then also at work, the library is downsizing, so I got a couple of books from there that no one has really been checking out. Two of them are the Politically Correct Bedtime Stories books. These are so hilarious. Like, I've... Oh gosh, I'm the only one that's checked them out from the work library, but um, basically it'll retell a fairy tale, but make it super politically correct to the point where it's really hilarious. And... Oh, it's just, it's so good. It's, they're, they're funny. And then I also got a copy of War of the Worlds. We have it in a big bind up, but I wanted to get this so I could just like read it on its own. And then I'm probably going to give this back to, um, either donate it back to, um, some of my patients or give it to one of the books. Oop, there went. Bookstores. Because while I'm reading it, I'd rather just have a stand, like a single copy of it. Then I also got Journey to the Center of the Earth, which was really nice it's like a really nice copy um it, it, so i got that one because no one was checking that out and then the piece de resistance piece de resistance piece de resistance it's six uh, six <coughs> old books six volumes of the works of edgar Allan poe they're really old they're not okay so it's not like a full set because these are volumes this one's upside down three six seven eight nine and ten so obviously it's not like a complete set um but they are pretty they're pretty cool and i just thought it would be fun to have no one was checking them out so i just that's one of the things that they were kind of gonna get rid of i have a hair in my mouth Blah. and that is all the books that i got for christmas I hope you've enjoyed this video. It was a long and struggling video for me. I struggled a lot, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Did you get any books for Christmas? If so, I would love to hear about them. If you have a video where you did a Christmas haul, link it below. I'm giving you permission to do this because I love watching these videos. Um, but that's all for now. If you would like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye! Tripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming, I'm done pulling up a fight